and then I realised that yes, there's it was cool, you know, to be um, popular and stuff, but then um, really need to knuckle down. So I knuckled down on my education and 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 um, yeah, those that's you know you ask me things I remember when I first moved on that that sticks out to me because after that I was more um, concentrating on to go to secondary school and getting good marks. So you know I, I sort of changed, but I was always like. The memories I have of this area is a lot of um, there's a lot of racism. I have to be honest; uh, that that will always stay with me. But one of the things I, I learned that a lot of the guys who were who were that way inclined, they became my friends because they didn't they hadn't really experienced um, you know like West Indian families etc. coming into the area. They didn't know them, didn't know enough about them. By the time I got to know like loads of my friends, they 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 could talk. Um, they they had the Jamaica patwa down, you know. You close your eyes, you think it's a you think it's a black person talking, and they knew all the food. You know, I knew their foods. I used to stack their house, you know. And that's when I learned that there's, um, you know, people can you know once pe- people are ignorant. I, I had to realise that people are just ignorant. It's just what they've been told, and when they get to know themselves, they just realise that you're just normal. <laughs> they're just a person like them. So. So those are the memories I remember. And then, you know, after that, it was pretty cool because there was this youth club. There was many, but I used to come here a lot and I used to go to another one called Studio 2000, which was... Um, it was based right in Winston Estate where most of the Caucasian families were. And so going in there, not any and anybody, a black person would go in there, but because of my mates who I had in this area and... Um, there was a there was a couple of black guys who used to go there and uh, females. My sister, obviously, because my sisters I have four sisters and three of them went to the same primary schools as I did, so they had white friends. And so you know, this was all part. I saw this whole um, melting pot um, out of the melting pot. People sort of understood one another's cultures. And by the time Studio Two Thousand Club, we were all going there. And we, it was more of a club for music more than like playing pool and stuff. It's a club where you could just hang out. And there was always music playing loud. T-Rex, The Wailers, you know, everything good of that period. And I always remember they would have these dances. The girls would do these dances. They, they'd have fags in their mouth and they'd, they'd all old and they'd be doing these little dances. You know, like the candy, but it wasn't the candy, it was some of them. And, um, yeah, that was unity. I saw unity building, innit? I could see the change happening. So that was the um, Club 2000 that's all knocked down now. The church is even knocked down. And I, I'm sure you, you've heard that they're doing some big gentrification mm-hmm. changes around everywhere. But, you know, all of these places you can see sport court. I lived in that block. That's where I had my first flat. I lived there. And I think that block there, it looks like where my mum lives now. It's called Scully. They have three of them. Scully, Inkster, Oldcroft. They all design the same. That so, you, one. so you grew up on the Winston. No, I grew up on, on Ingray Street, which is part of the York Road um, estate. And then um, just, it's just literally around the corner is Winstanley. So it's literally across the road you can go, and it's Winstanley Estate. And the whole territory thing, it was like that then as well, but it wasn't as heavy, you know. But you would have to be careful if, you, if you're walking through Winstanley Estate at certain times, you would, you would have to know somebody, or you'd have to be with somebody, you know. Because the guys, it was all white guys, they would have you, they would call you names, they would run you down, kick you up. But as I said, as, you know, they start to see our faces, so we didn't have none of that. Even though, you know, I was just saying to, um, I was just saying earlier on, the room where I was waiting, that was the room. Every Thursday, it would be packed out, we'd watch Top of the Pops. And, you know, it would be packed out with white guys, fuck it, all right. And... You have to kind of mind. They were calm in ears, but by then I, I kind of knew how to just deal with it, you know. But it wasn't nice when I really looked back. And I just wanted to watch Top of the Pops, me and my mates. And, and then, you know, I saw this place turn from a white community, you know, estate, all the young people, to a black. Because the flats just over there, which are now private, they were being built whilst I was coming here. When they were all finished... They moved a lot of black families there. Um, and, you know, when you're 12, 13, you know, I hadn't sort of ventured out of this estate too much. So 
you go under the bridge and go straight up, there's a road called Northcote Road. And it's just literally 10 minutes from here, 15 minutes. And on this Northcote Road, is, they used to have a large market on either side and, and roads off of the back of them. And all of these houses were owned by black people. All of them. And it went into sort of um, Ballum and etc. So these people started to come to this club. Um, I told a lot of my friends, because when I'm at secondary school, that's when I saw, wow, wow, so many black guys my age, because when it was just being white, my school, everything. So I got to learn, know these guys, and they'd come here, and like my brothers, yeah, or my sisters, they would tell their friends, and they would come. So this club, eventually all the white people left, and the only original people who were here was myself and a couple of my mates, a couple of my white friends as well, Stuart, you know, there were certain guys they could they would come here because they never had a problem never did but I just remembered it when it was brand new we used to come here as all white people cool names and you come here you know like 10 years down the line it's all black people and still you know the same thing happened you used to have a, I'm not going to say his name because he's still sort of around but he was a right bully he used to just this guy and he went to our school as well older, much older than me he you know, like, I learned there's good and bad in everybody. That's what I'm saying. Because, you know, as much as I got in with my brothers and sisters and stuff, you know, uh, I, I sort of experienced similar kind of treatment, you know, calling names, 